Good evening, class. I hope you've all had a wonderful long weekend. I'm sure you all had fun and whatnot, partied hard as you kids do nowadays. I know what you get up to. <laughs> well, everyone, just please calm down now. We have to focus on the assignments for this week, so please, everyone, just please bear with me whilst I read them out. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. You have an extended literature essay due on Monday, an IA on Tuesday, complete your math studies handbook by Wednesday, a HL chemistry exam on Thursday, along with your lab assignment and revision for next week's quiz, as well as your Spanish oral presentation straight in the morning. Now, I know this sounds like a lot of work, students, but I have great faith in all of you. There is no reason to be stressed or pressured. Just calm down, okay? I have great faith. Please, please, I, I can assure you. Oh, and before I forget, make sure you're there in the plaza on Monday morning for your CAS meeting. You have your DBC conference after school on Tuesday, plus the Marissa finals that are on Wednesday. Don't miss that. Spirit Club final around Thursday and a meeting with your counsellor Friday afternoon. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is IBE. This is high school in general. You have to keep up with the pace. Boom, boom, boom. You can't afford to... Drag behind or let yourself down. No, you always have to keep up with that pace. And it can be achieved. And, you know, you don't have to achieve it via caffeine dependency or cramming in all the information in a day before a major test. No, you don't have to do any of that. All you need is a bit of balance. And I assure you it will only take 20 minutes. Mindfulness in education. Growing up, I was a very nervous kid. I had a lot of pressure on myself to do well, specifically in my academia as well as my sport. Um, Specifically with my soccer, I put so much pressure on myself to, to do well that I was scared that what my coach was going to think of me, what my parents, what, what everyone, my teammates were going to think of me. And it eventually took the fun out of playing. I wasn't enjoying myself when I was on the pitch. And it became a, overall a very negative experience. This stress and this pressure and this anxiety basically translated into the classroom. I wasn't meeting deadlines. Um, I was nervous to talk to teachers because I thought... Oh, what are they going to think of me? And I had this very negative outlook on what I was doing. I, I didn't think the quality of my work was that good. And overall, I placed this, this miasma of gravity upon my shoulders and I, I really wasn't able to shake it off. My parents always told me just to relax. And that was the main thing. They just indicated, go out there, relax. Don't worry what's going to happen. Don't worry about what we think, uh, what your teachers think, what your coach thinks. Just go out there and do what you do best and have fun and enjoy yourself. Now, that left an impression on me and it planted that seed, but I still wasn't able to fully shake off this adversity or how I was interpreting this adversity. So I would go out onto the pitch for, with my soccer and I was playing well, but still, I, I was still nervous and I was still anxious, but at least that seed had been planted. And I realised I had to keep this positive momentum going and I realised that I could actually harness this positive energy and continue it on and I realised how I could do that and that was through Transcendental Meditation. My dad had been doing transcendental meditation for years beforehand, um, 20 years before me. He'd been doing it in his business life and it helped him a lot with, you know, dealing with stress and anxiety as well as it helped him with his relationships. And Overall, he obviously had a much better uh, attitude as a result. And I wanted to take that upon me and I wanted to try it out. And obviously, I was young and I, I thought, oh, well, what can I learn from meditation? You know, I'm just a kid. I, I don't think I could actually do this. But I tried it once and I tried it the next day and eventually I felt much better about myself. What happens during this process of meditation is very interesting. If you go into a small room or whatever, a quiet room, and you sit down and you repeat a mantra to yourself, you can repeat it as many times as you want, and every time a thought comes into your head, you just repeat that mantra and you try to get yourself back on track. And what happens is the frontal cortex of our brain, which is responsible for reasoning, planning, emotion, self-conscious awareness, goes completely offline during meditation. So you are really able to clear your mind of all the stresses and the anxieties of the outside world and focus on one thing at a time. And it really teaches you to live in the moment. As a result, I saw major benefits, not only myself for, for my academia, but as well as my sport. I was performing much better in my soccer. I, was, I became captain of my team. Um, my schoolwork, I was finally meeting deadlines. I was seeing teachers. I was engaging in the work that I was doing. And overall, again, I had this really, really good outlook on what I was doing with my life. And, and it had a, a very positive effect on me. Specifically as well with creativity, I felt as if I tapped into a sense of creativity via this use of transcendental meditation because I was able to clear my mind again from all this stress and really focus on what I was doing. And because I, I consider myself to an extent a bit of a try-hard actor, I do plays and theatre productions uh, from time to time. But 
by just meditating at least 20 minutes before a performance or 20 minutes before a rehearsal, I was really able to engage and fully portray the character that I was portraying to its fullest extent. I was really getting involved with the work that I was doing, with the play and the production. I wasn't focusing about what the audience would think of me, what, what my teachers were thinking of me, what my parents... And I was fully able to engage with the work that I was doing. And that had a really liberating... It was a really liberating experience for me overall. Now, I'm not the only one who's caught on to this. Of, of course, many people uh, practice transcendental meditation. But specifically for schools, 91 schools in the US out of 13 states have implemented transcendental meditation into their curriculum. There's been a 10% improvement overall uh, for GPA scores as well as the English and math scores over the course of one year and a 40% reduction in overall stress and perceived stress from teachers and students alike. So what does that leave us? Well, as we know, the IB wants to be known as a curriculum that gives students the opportunity to reach their full potential. They want to be known as a, as a curriculum that produces new age thinkers and innovators that could possibly change the very world we live in for the better. But the thing is, these goals and these aspirations cannot be achieved without balance. Balance that assures, assures students that they can clear their mind from stress and anxiety and hence open up their gateways to creativity and wisdom. A critical process that gives students the chance and the space and the time to really reflect, reconstruct and rejuvenate their senses. You see, we must reimagine our use of time and space in our learning environments in order to implement this critical process of mindfulness into the curriculum and hence give to, uh, students the opportunity to maximise their full potential. You see, once the path towards your goals and your aspirations is clear and you can see the path and your goals in the distance, all you have to do is start walking. That's all you have to do. Just start walking. Let yourself become immersed in the journey and the experience and the rest will sort itself out for the better. And that's what Transcendental Meditation can offer. And remember, it only takes 20 minutes. Thank you very much.